up in the best way Hi, I'm Dave with Fastway Trailer Products. Today, for our video, we're going to show you how to install an E2 trunnion hitch. Now, this is a much better option than using just a ball mount to tow your trailer or even an old chain style weight distribution hitch. And the reason is because with either of those products, with the ball mount, you don't get any sway control or weight distribution. With the chain style hitch, you can get some weight distribution. It's not quite as good as the E2 hitch will give you. And to get any sway control, you have to use some sort of an add on. With the E2 hitch, you don't have to ever worry about add-ons. All, all the sway control is built right into the hitch. So as soon as you engage the hitch and hook up your trailer, the sway control is in force. Now, that saves you a lot of headache, a lot of time and hassle, especially uh, when you're getting set up or taking it down. And there's also no backing or turning restrictions, so it's a lot easier to get your trailer into your campsite if it's a tight turn or, or something like that. You don't have anything extra to hassle with. So to get started, let's show you what's in the box. Here's our trunnion box, nice packaging. The first thing you'll notice is your uh, set of instructions, your owner's manual. Make sure you read that thoroughly before you start your install and then follow along and, and follow it as a guide to set your hitch up. That way you get it set up correctly. That provides the safest and the best towing setup for you and your family. Keep it as a reference and refer back to it if you ever need to adjust your hitch. For example, if you get a new tow vehicle, a new trailer, or something like that, don't just use the same setup. Go back through the install instructions, get it set up for that particular trailer and tow vehicle. Every one of those is a little bit different. Do it right and keep yourself and your family safe. Inside the box, you get your trunnion hitch head. It also comes with an adjustable shank. Uh, this one can be used either in the drop position or in the rise position. We also have specialty shanks available that are longer to match your particular tow vehicle and trailer setup. Uh, make sure that you get the right size shank so that you get your hitch head set at the correct height. That makes the rest of your install work better. You get correct weight distribution. Take the time to use the right shank. This is called a snap-up lever. The idea behind this is a helper if you need a little extra leverage to get your spring arms up onto the L brackets. These are the spring arms of the trunnion hitch. There's two of those, one for each side. The unique thing about this is the surface back here on the back, that's where you get the sway control, the built-in sway control. That's the area that rests on the L bracket and provides that friction point for the sway control. Of course, you've got your install hardware. This is the bracket that goes on the trailer frame. Within this you have uh, two outside link plates, and two inside link plates, those bolt around the trailer frame. And then this is the L bracket, this slides over the two studs like that. And this is the surface where the spring arm rests and it provides your friction sway control here and it gives you the adjustability to, to change the weight distribution to get it dialed into what you need. And that's about it. Let's take a look at the tools you're going to need. For the trunnion install, you're obviously going to need your instruction manual. Here's the tools that you're going to need. You need some wrenches, either a socket set or a box end combination type of a wrench. You need an inch and an eighth wrench and an inch and a sixteenth wrench. Those will be used to tighten down the socket bolts to hold the hitch head to the adjustable shank. You're also going to want a torque wrench for that that's capable of at least 250 foot-pounds to snug those down at the end for the final tightening. Now, make sure that you use a torque wrench. A lot of times if you use an air hammer, you won't get them tight enough or you'll get them too tight. If you don't get them tight enough, obviously they're loose and that's a dangerous towing situation. If you get them too tight, you can actually stretch the bolt or, or damage the hardware, so you don't want to do that either. So make sure that you use a torque wrench to do that. You're also going to need a three-quarter inch set of wrenches, a socket and a open end. That's to put the hardware and the brackets on the trailer frame. You need a 15 16 socket. That's the easiest thing to use. That's to adjust the angle set bolt on the bottom of the hitch head and we'll show you that later. Now if you're crazy enough to try to put your own hitch ball on, you're going to need a massive torque wrench. This one goes uh, up pretty high. You need about 450-460 foot-pounds of torque 
to tighten down the hitch ball just because that nut and the uh, is so big and you're also going to need a, a specialty socket this is an inch and seven eighths socket and this one is designed uh, to be a little bit shorter so that it fits in and and it's easy to tighten down that uh, hitch ball but we'll show you how to do that too you can also go to the dealer and have them install the hitch ball for you as well okay a couple more notes before we start the actual setup of the hitch the first thing you want to do is make sure that your trailer and your tow vehicle are loaded pretty much the way that you would normally tow with them that means water in the water tanks propane in the propane tanks, camping gear. If you're going to be towing some firewood or a four-wheeler in your truck, make sure that that's in place. Get those weights all set up the way that they will be when you're towing and that way the setup on your hitch is correct. You're getting good weight distribution and sway control for those particular weights. That gives you the safest towing setup that you can get. Another thing that you need to be aware of is the airbag systems on your tow vehicle. If you have a manual system that you blow up on your rear axle Make sure that you inflate those airbags to whatever you like them to be before you set the weight distribution up on your hitch. If you wait and set the weight distribution hitch up first and then blow up the airbags, you effectively raise the sway control and the weight distribution off the hitch and that nullifies the effect. So you don't want to do that. Set the airbags to the pressure that you want first, then set up your E2 hitch. Now next is the automatic leveling systems that come on some of the vehicles. You want those to be shut down when you turn, when you engage your hitch and get the setup for the weight distribution. So either turn the key off and make sure that that doesn't run or pull out the fuse so that doesn't run in some cases. Then set your weight distribution hitch up and that way it will come out as a much better setup. All right, let's put the hitch ball on the hitch head. To install our hitch ball, we mount the shank in the receiver, hold it temporarily with our hitch pin just to sturdy it. Now we take our hitch head, turn it upside down like this. And we use our shank bolts just to hold it temporarily. We slide those through. Now the hitch ball we mount up from underneath like that. Drop our split washer on. Whoop. And tighten the nut down. Uh, at this point you're going to need a helper. So Mike's going to hold this wrench. That keeps the hitch ball from turning there. Now we use our inch and three quarter socket and our big torque wrench. This is set to the 460 foot pounds that we need. And that goes on there. And tighten it down. Now to start the install, you want to set your trailer and your tow vehicle on a nice level piece of ground, uh, flat and level, either like a parking lot or inside a, a workshop or something like that. Line them up together so that they're in line with each other. And then the next thing that you need to do is to level your trailer. That way that you can get the correct coupler height and you need that to set the rest of your hitch up correctly. So the way that I like to do that is to measure the main frame rail of the trailer, both at the front and the back. When the measurement on to that is equal, you know you've got your trailer parallel to the ground, and then you can move on and go ahead with the rest of the install. So, I just come down here like this, and check from the ground to the bottom of the frame rail here. This is showing 17 inches. Now I'll go check the back. The next step in our setup is to get our hitch head and our hitch ball set at the right height. To do that, we need to know what our coupler height is. There's a place to put that measurement in the instructions. We've got our trailer level. So to take this measurement, I go from the ground up to the top of the socket here where the hitch ball rides. And this is showing that we're about 22 and a half inches. And so that's where we need to set our hitch ball over here. We need to put a set of spacer washers and our spacer rivet in the hitch head. For this setup, I'm going to go with the minimum, which is five spacer washers. We have a pretty light tongue weight. If you had a heavier tongue weight, a heavier trailer, uh, or maybe a different tow vehicle, you might need a different uh, number of washers. Follow the instructions and then make adjustments if you need to. So we put those in place here at the top of the hitch head. And now we temporarily hold this with one of our shank bolts. And we're going to push this up tight 
and double check that measurement. And we're right there, just about 22 and a half, so that's a good place to start. And we'll put that in. And one thing you need to make sure is with these conical washers, you get the teeth inwards towards the bolt channel so that as those tighten down, the uh, cone comes out of the washer and it pinches in and grabs that and holds that as one solid piece with the shank. And put those in there, put the others on the other side. Then just finger tighten these nuts for now. There'll be a final tightening later after we go through all of the weight distribution setup process where you'll snug them down really tight. For now, we just want them on there for safety. The next step is to tighten up our angle set bolt here at the bottom. So you need your 15 16 socket. And you just want to tighten that until you can see your spacer rivet and washers come in contact with the shank here at the top. You don't want to tighten that down too much right now. It'll be adjusted later in that final tightening as well. The last step is to put the spring arms in place. With the trunnion hitch, we take it like this, roll the bottom knuckle into that bottom socket and the top one into the top, our keeper pin in place, and that'll stay there. Now we'll do that to the other side and we'll be ready to put the brackets on our trailer frame. Our next step is to put the brackets back here on the trailer frame. So for the trunnion, the recommendation is between 30 and 27 inches back from the coupler. When we take a measurement here, 30 would be ideal, but in this situation we're running in to the battery rail back here. Now that's one of the advantages that you get with an E2 hitch is you have a flexible install for that bracket position. So it doesn't have to be right exactly at that one measurement. The battery rails in the way or the propane tanks, you can move that forward or backward a little bit and accommodate what you need instead of having to modify the trailer tongue. It's a great advantage. In this case, we're gonna move our brackets forward we're gonna to come to the about 28 inches. That'll miss the propane tanks and the battery rails, which is right here at the edge of that sign. To set our brackets up, this is the outside link plate. We put the install bolt through here like this. Take the inside link plate that goes on the back side, and a split washer and your nut. Now these just drop over the top of the frame, just like that. In this case, these are the standard brackets. They have an adjustment for a three, four, five, or six inch trailer frame. Our frame on this one is a four inch, so our bolt needs to go right here to make sure that we're up as tight to the bottom of that frame as we can get. You always wanna have those nice and tight. You don't wanna put it down here and have any space in there to allow that to move, keep it pinched tight to your frame. There are some frames out there made by the manufacturer called Balnorco. Those are four and three eighths inches and those won't work with this standard bracket. So if your trailer has one of those four and three eighths inch frames, get in touch with your dealership or contact us here at Fastway Trailer Products. We've got a special set of inside and outside link plates that are made just for that frame. Get those and make sure that you get them tight on your trailer. So in the, we've got it this far. Now I'm gonna put the other nut and washer on the back of the bottom bolt. And when you're tightening these up, you don't want to just tighten one all the way down and then go to the next one. You want to alternate back and forth, make sure that you pinch this, bring them up tight to the frame first, that way they're on straight, then go ahead and torque them down. These will be torqued down to 65 foot-pounds with the torque wrench. Once those are torqued down, you need to install your L bracket. I like to start right here in the center section. That gives me adjustability up or down if I need to have it. So we'll put those on there and we'll tighten those down with these nuts, the nylock nuts that come with the set. Those get torqued down to 75 foot pounds in the end. Once that's all bolted together in place, we'll back our truck up and we'll take our first set of measurements. With everything set up, we're ready to take our first measurement, and that needs to be done without anything coupled up. We're gonna get a baseline measurement for our front axle. So you can see we've got it lined up and ready to go, but we don't have it coupled up yet. Let's go take that measurement. Now this is a little trick one of our viewers taught me. Take a piece of uh, painter's tape and put it on your 
front fender like that and you've got a nice crisp line to measure to. So we're going to go right down through the front axle and our measurement is showing 37 and 3 quarters. We're going to record that on line A of our instructions. And then we'll t drop the weight on and take our second measurement. So we've dropped the coupler down. All of the weight's resting on the hitch now. We don't have our weight distribution set up. We can see that nothing is being held by the tongue or the tongue jack anymore. Now we're going to take our second measurement. What we should expect to see happen here is the front end raise. We've got the rear axle acting like a teeter-totter when you drop the weight of the tongue of the trailer on the back, the front should come up. And that's what we're seeing at 38 inches now. So our next step is to engage the weight distribution. We're going to try to get halfway back to that 37 and 3 quarter inch initial measurement all the way back if we can. All right, we've got our weight distribution engaged. Everything's coupled up. The tongue jack's up. All of the tongue weight is now being distributed by the E2 sway control hitch. We're gonna take our third measurement and see how we did. All right, we're right back to 37 and 3 quarters. So our minimum that we would want to be back would be 37 and 7 eighths, that would be halfway back. We've been able to get almost all the way back, which is even better. Uh, the closer to that you can get, but at least halfway back. So we know that our weight distribution setup is good. We're gonna go back and check the pitch of our trailer, make sure that that's correct. If that's all good, we'll do our final tightening and we'll be ready to take it out for a test tow. To check the pitch, we're gonna come back, do the same thing that we did to level the trailer initially. We're just going to check our trailer frame. When we had it level, we were at 17 on the front and the back. We're just a little bit below that, 16 and 3 quarters. That's well within the inch and a quarter tolerance that we need up or down. So our, the pitch on our trailer is good. It's going to tow nice and level. Our weight distribution is good. Our setup's good. Now we need to go and do the final tightening and then take it out for a tow. Our weight distribution is good. Our trailer pitch is good we're ready to do the final tightening step. So we're gonna take this out like this and we're gonna flip our hitch over. What happens is when we put the weight distribution on, we smash those spacer rivets and spacer washers just a little bit and we end up with just a little bit of play. So we turn this over, the weight pulls the head down tight to the angle set bolt or I mean spacer river and spacer washer. And now we just want to snug a little bit that angle set bolt. That's ready to go. Now we use our torque wrench, our other wrenches. We're going to tighten down the socket bolts here to our 250 foot pounds of torque. That'll smash these uh, conical washers down, pinch everything up tight. And then we want to make sure that our brackets back on our trailer are torqued to 65 foot-pounds and the L-brackets on the outside link plate are torqued to 75 foot-pounds. Once those are all tightened up, flip this back over, hitch up, take it out for a test drive. Well, we've got everything coupled up and ready to go. Our seven pin plug, our safety change, our uh, breakaway cable, and we're ready to take it out for a tow. All the final tightening is done. Uh, that's it for our setup today. Thanks for watching. If you like our stuff, please subscribe to the channel. You'll get notified when we post new videos and you can go back and watch the other ones that we've done. Also, take a few minutes and like our social media pages. You can keep in contact with us there. Join the conversation. We give you updates on products and new information. And we also have some great giveaways and contests there as well. Thanks for watching. once you get it all set up. Now, uh, one more note that I need to make before we start setting up the hitch. <laughs> Mind blown. Well, I guess it just means I'm not too proud. <laughs> I don't get offended with laughing at myself. <laughs> uh, sign 
and that's where we'll set our brackets up. Hey Mike. <laughs>